What's up, collectors? It's your friendly neighborhood anime collector here, P. Rockzilla. And today we're going to be taking a look at Motoko from Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. I'll be honest with you guys. I haven't seen this anime yet. I know it's an anime series. I think there are two seasons so far. It is on my watch list, but I have just haven't had a time or chance to actually get around to watching it. Um, I did see all the other previous Ghost in the Shell uh, stuff, like between the animes and the movies. So I'm familiar with the character. And I've said it before in a previous review. Normally anything, mostly anything, Berserk, Ghost in the Shell, and Fist of the North Star, I'm probably going to get if it's within a good price range or if it fits my collection. So this is the newest piece from Ghost in the Shell. I do have the two previous versions of the Figma characters for her. And I'll probably show them in the size comparison or in the final polls at the end. But other than that, people, let's get the review started. Dale. Alright, so let's take a quick look at the box before we get the figure out because I do know Figmas do get bootlegs made from them. So just for buyers can be aware of what they're going to get once they receive it. If they purchase it from any kind of sites like eBay, Meraki, sites like that. So you got the information in the front. You got the sticker here. The official sticker just lets you know. It's not really a holographic sticker. It's usually a holographic sticker, but it looks like it just embedded onto the box. You have different poses of her right here in the back. Picture of her with different poses, the different bodies that she comes with, all the accessories, all the legal stuff down here, another pose. And then you get the low from syrup bar right here. There you go, guys. Let's get her out. All right, so once we get the figure out the box, this is what you get in the clamshell. And let's take a closer look at what we have here. Let me just zoom in a little bit more right there. All right, so of course, look at the figure first. Let's get this plastic off her waist. And here we have her. One thing I noticed right away, they, she has that weird neck peg joint. Let's see if we zoom in right here. Come on, zoom. You can see right there. But this is basically gives you more articulation. I'll just explain that more when we go for articulation. Just take a quick look at the figure. This is all hard plastic. Hard plastic. The jacket is a little bit malleable. Treads down there. All right, so that's the figure, real quick. So, the head scope looks like her. So, let's take a look at all the accessories she comes with, which is not much. So, she does go with two separate faces. One is the more basic look, just looking to the left, or my right, I'm sorry. And then we have more of the action face, where she's more screaming, yelling. And then we get her interchangeable torso. This is if you want to display her without the jacket. I was always interested how this was going to come out because I thought the jacket was going to be removable, but I guess not. So I'll have to look at the instructions, see how that works. And then under the tape here, let's get that tape off. We have her two weapons. We have her handgun. Basic soft plastic. Not too soft. Not much detail in the gun. And we have her cannon, her rifle. This has a little more detail. Nothing special about it. Nothing moves or slides out. You have to probably make some holes yourself there for the barrels. No, not bad. All right, so 
And we'll take a closer look at the figure, how everything's spread out. Oh, she does come with a stand too in the bottom right here and different hands. So we'll go over and take a look at all the accessories and have her spread out when we get back. All right, here we got her spread out with all her accessories. Uh, we got the basic Figma stand. It does come with an adapter, so you can use this to have her different, more dynamic poses. Just touches there, and then this portion goes into the back of the figure. And then she does come with also, just like every other Figma spare peg for the hands. Then she comes with a set of hands. Now, one cool thing is the instructions actually number these hands for you. And they basically tell you which hands are used for what. So these top two ones are used to have, if you want to have her hold the rifle like that. So that's a cool feature. Trying to get instructions that actually help you out. Yep, so you basically get the rifle hands, the pistol hands. You get two closed hands. This is more if you want to just hold the pistol without the trigger finger on there. And then you get two open hands. All right, so we already went over the other accessories. So let's just go to the articulation real quick. So she can, with the help of that weird peg, she can look up that far up. She can look down that far. She can move her head all the way around to 360. The arms are a little hindered because of the jacket. So she can't... Ooh. Hope I didn't break this joint, man. Come on, please don't break. I mean, no, the Figma. No, there we go. All right, so he's got to readjust that a little bit. And you can actually get the arms up. Just got to kind of pull the joints out a little bit. I'll see, pull them out like that a little. And then tuck them under the jacket so you can actually get the hands out. T pose. All right, the elbows can bend. And then let's get this elbow bended. All right, so she got flex her muscles too. And then they do pivot. So you can get pretty good articulation with her. If you pull it out more, it can go all the way up. But you always hear that sound and always just be nervous with these figmas already had joints break on so yeah, as you can see already it's a little complication with the joint anyways so let's get that arm back down and let's move to the waist so she can this is bother me though see this is gonna be a problem i'll get that fixed later all right Let's get the arms up. She can bend back that much. That's a good bend. She has ab crunch. She can go that far up. All right. Her legs can spread. She can do to a split. You can see the pegs under there. And then the legs can go that far up so she could do the Hogan boot the knees do bend you don't get the full 90 but you get good enough the feet do articulate back you go forward you get the toe articulation there on the boot The feet do not pivot much. Yeah, a little bit right there. Yeah, yeah, a decent amount. All right. Then she does move pretty good. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead. I'll get her posed up. Get her in a uh, size comparison, and then I'll go ahead and show you guys how to take the upper torso off and swap it out with this one after I do the size comparison. Fix that joint also.
All right, so here we got her posed up with the jacket still on. I was able to fix that joint, that shoulder joint. It did have some stress on the joint, so you got to be very careful with these Figma figures because the joints are pretty sensitive. And just when you articulate them, make sure you pay attention to which way the joints are going because sometimes the peg doesn't turn completely. So when you try to move the joint, you do put some stress on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was also able to swap out the face. I'll show that again. When I show you guys how to re uh, remove the torso, so I'm going to have her posed up and with the jacket off in my display. So I'll go over that. But anyways, here's a quick size comparison. We have her here posed up with the jacket holding her rifle. And she has the gun, as you can see, is, is in the ho holster on her back by her butt. So let's get a quick size comparison real quick. So let's bring in SH Figure Arts Sasuke. From the Naruto line. Let's move them. They look pretty cool together. All right. So another figure I'm bringing in from the SH Figure Arts line also is going to be Trunks from Dragon Ball. There we have Trunks, Sasuke, and then we're going to bring in a fellow Figma figure. We're going to bring in. Princess Zelda from The Legend of Zelda. There we go. You get a good size comparison right there. And then last but not least, we're going to bring in my good old friend, Baby Godzilla. There you guys go. So here's a good size comparison with different lines. And you can see as the Figmas, you know, they're... Scales are different all over the place, but they kind of keep them within the character's line. Because I'm pretty sure in anime she is shorter than Princess Zelda. But you never know. I don't know. I could be wrong. But So let me go ahead and get grab her. And I'm going to do a quick demonstration of how you remove the torso. Alright, so according to instructions, first things first, we got to pull these arms off. So when you pull the arm off. I guess for the, this is just for the jacket portion. So you gotta take this little peg out right here. This little piece. I think, let's see. Yep, there we go. So that comes off right there. And then you just take the other one off. Same thing. All right. So the next thing is remove the head. And since we have the head removed, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to replace the face real quick. So just pull the, grab the bangs on the side, and just pull them forward, slide, there you go. Face comes right off. And actually, I may just keep it with that same face. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to keep it with that same thing. So basically, you just take the head off, slide it out, put it in there, whichever one you want to use. Drop the head. All right. So then... The torso, when you get the torso, you have these little weird pegs in there. Just pull these pegs out. Save those for the other portion of the torso when you put it back in storage. Alright, so once you do that, supposedly, you just slide in these things right here. So maybe you are supposed to keep those pegs on there. Nope, it's not. All right, so yep, so do take these off. And just slide these back in there. Be careful, don't put too much stress on the joint. You don't want to break that peg in there. And just push it in there firmly. There you go. Let's get this one in there. There we go. All right, so there you go. Same thing with this peg, pull that out. Keep that for the other one. And then here, just pull the body off just like that. And then you can get the body attached into that peg right in there. Be careful, it does move around. So you got to try to be careful not to break these dang pegs. There we go, slide it in more. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So then finally, get the head on there. And there we go. So now we have her with the jacket off. So I'm going to get her posed up in the final pose. And have my final thoughts. 
All right, so here I got her posed up. She's going to be on the far left, the one in the running pose. I got her posed up with the other two versions of her I have so far in the Figma line. Um, so I got to say she fits in perfectly. I'm happy to have the threesome now and have a good representation of each movie and an anime series in the series. Um, the one thing I do have, I guess, I have something I forgot, it's kind of a complaint I have from the previous one in the middle, is for some reason, maybe because in the cartoons, I can't remember, she's only right-handed, but it's kind of, they don't give you really a hand that can hold any gun on the left hand, so you kind of got to mess around with it a little bit, as you can see in the centerpiece right there, I kind of messed around where I have the gun in her hand, but it's not fully in there where the trigger finger is on the gun, on the trigger. But other than that, you know, that's the only minor gripe I have on the figure. Um, just be careful with the joints. I did, like I said, I did have that little issue with the shoulder joint on the previous torso. But other than that, I mean, they can pose, as you can see, they can pose very dynamically. They can, there's basically no limitation on the posing that you can get with these Figma figures, or at least with the Ghost in the Shell figures here. I did end up swapping out the face to the yelling face. I figured I didn't have any of the other two with a more of a like, open mouth yelling face. So here's all three of them. So they look good together. This is how they're going to probably more, more likely be in my display. Um, if you're a fan of the Ghost in the Shell series, and if you collect Figmas, I would say definitely pick this up. If you're not into the Figmas and you not, don't really need any major representation of Ghost in the Shell, then you can probably skip on this. But if you don't have it yet and you like a representation of Ghost in the Shell, then I'll say pick any of these three figures up. They're all excellent figures for the anime, and they're good representations, and they look good in your display. All right, people, so if you enjoyed the review, please hit the subscribe, hit the like, click that bell notification so you can get notified of all my upcoming reviews and special things I got going on for my channel stream-wise. So like I always say, people, have a good one. Be safe. Dale.